Today in the news, we got AMD rumors that get adjusted, we got read-only memory, and bad news from Intel. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. So the company is preparing to launch a lineup of refreshed GPUs in about a week. We're talking 6650XT, 6750XT, and 6950XT. In terms of specs, so far we're not looking at a huge bump. Little tweaks here and there for boost and game clocks, and the GDDR6 memory gets a jump from 16 gigabits per second to 18 gigabits per second. I don't think the performance difference between the regular one and the 50XT models will be that big, but we'll see. Anyways, that's the closest release that we have, and it's just a refresh. What about the next generation? Well, it looks like the uh, information is still changing here and there. On previous rumors, Navi 31, the highest end chip, was rumored to have the equivalent of 60 work groups. Within those work groups, we're looking at two compute units each, so 120 compute units. And since the RDNA 3 architecture apparently has 128 stream processors on each compute, compute unit, we were looking at 15,360 stream processors. Damn. Now, unfortunately, it seems like those specs were a little too optimistic since we now have a new set of numbers for Navi 31 and the slightly smaller Navi 32 chip. Legendary leaker, Greymon55 over on Twitter, said that the RX 7000 series would be cut down a lot more. We're now looking at Navi 31 with 48 work groups, which means 96 compute units and 12,288 stream processors. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing though. According to Greymon, the performance goals remains the same or higher from AMD. And with that rumor floating around that the RDNA 3 architecture is a three gigahertz beast, I believe that. Oh, and Greymon also gave us a revision on the Navi 32 chip. Instead of 40 work groups, which is 80 compute units slash 10,240 stream processors, we're now looking at 32 work groups, which is 64 compute units, and it means that you'll have 8,192 stream processors. Just in case you didn't know, Navi 31 would be for the top of the line SKUs, so 7800, 7800 XT, and 7900 XT, and the Navi 32 would be for the mid tier ones like the 7700 and 7700 XT. For Navi 33, that's the so-called 7600 XT that apparently would beat a 6900 XT, well, its specs have not changed. It's still a monolithic beast. What we did here is that if Navi 31 is give or take three gigahertz, Navi 33 is going way past those clock speeds. So why would the core count of a GPU drop like that? Well, first, these are just leaks and rumors, so the information could just be from an earlier iteration or it could be deliberately spread by AMD to keep their stuff secret. But if the numbers are correct, it could be one of two things. Either we're looking at a chip that has been cut down because of poor yields. So basically the silicon of individual chiplets has 60 compute units, but it's being cut down to a 48 because the yields are that bad, or the silicon itself is maxed out at 48 compute units each. I don't know which one is right, but if it's the former, it means that AMD has an opportunity to expand the lineup later with refreshes, kind of like how Nvidia keeps releasing TIs and super branded GPUs. Have you ever wanted to write data into an SSD once and then never be able to write on it again? Well, Verbatim has just the thing for you. They launched a write-only drive called the Swova 128G. It's meant for archiving data and has a 10-year warranty, although they don't guarantee that your data will be there in 10 years, just that the drive will still work or they'll replace it. Anyways, I just thought it was a cool little gizmo. I mean, I would still just recommend you use a hard drive to archive stuff or a regular SLC SSD, but I'm sure that there's a market for this kind of thing. And lastly, we got a prediction from Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger, and unfortunately, it's not a good one. While prices of things like GPUs have been falling hard and are almost reaching MSRP, one thing that hasn't come back to the pre-pandemic levels is the availability. 
we're still in a chip shortage after all. And going back to uh, Mr. Gelsinger, well, he thinks that this chip shortage will likely last until 2024. That's because now it's not just the logistics and the materials. The actual equipment to manufacture chips is getting hit. Hopefully, he was talking about Intel specifically because, man, I cannot take another two years of this. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, it's right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.